that Jesus was there with. A lot of times we want to paint the picture. This is what I want to do today is uh, paint the picture of how people see God and his love and, and things and different things. But love doesn't necessarily mean that you're all, uh, I sometimes say give you a hook that doesn't offend anybody. It's just trying to get you love. It's not the peace, 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 and no conflict. It's not uh, uh, happy. Have. I spoke out of the wheels of that time, so that's why I said no, no <laughs> offense. But, um, but it just seems that we just want everything to be so positive or so negative. But but marriage is not all positive, just so negative. Right. Having children is not all positive, just so negative. You know, there, there are conflicts there. There are things. And a lot of times this generation is ready to throw something away without going through the conflict. You know, it doesn't understand what it means to have a different opinion. You're not always right. And not everybody's always wrong. Two people can be right at the same time. Amen. It may be controversial, but uh, uh, the flag, you know, the Confederate flag issue, uh, uh, both sides can be right. It is a symbol of hate, but to you it might be a symbol of heritage. Yeah. But to me, I think the hate outweighs the heritage. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand you may have been, you know, through talking about revisionist history and how what it really, the original man said this, and now it's changed, and then people say, well, no. But still, there's, there's hatred in and of that flag. Like they can, uh, the German twat stick and say, No, it's my heritage. We fought in that, and we just did what the government told us to do. But no, I'm done with millions that died in that. And so let's come to an understanding, let's just come to an understanding of this removing any symbol of hate. But that's another long uh, dialogue. Um, but we have to understand that we have to live in a generation that knows that the truth is not going to always be pleasant. And that believing in God isn't always a good, enjoyable experience. There are people that disagree with you. They call you homophobic. They call you bigots. They call you all these things. But the, the underlying thing, whether it's homosexuality, whether it's, whether it's some of the evil that we see on TV, whether it's the president who sings Amazing Grace all the while, uh, talking about the greatness of, of the LGBT movement, you know, it, it's just... Uh, we have to deal with so much in this thing. Do we hate? No, but we have to understand that God is true, that God is holy, and nothing unclean could dwell in his presence. And we can't come to God any kind of way, but we have to understand that we have to be just, righteous. We can't do it in and of ourselves. It is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, rejection of Christ is nothing new. In the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse number 16, it says, When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up and raised, he went to his synagogue on the Sabbath day. That was his custom. He stood up and read from the book of Isaiah that was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recover the sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. It says the Lord of the gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the eyes were fixed upon him, then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at his gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He says, He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you would say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard of you, heard you did at Capernaum. He said, truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's own town. Amen. But the truth is, and this is the part I want to kind of spit out. The truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. And there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to the widow of Zarephath and Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha. And none of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. When they heard this, they started to get upset and filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, led him to the brow of the hill in which their, own, which their town was built, so that they could might. They might hurl him off the cliff, but he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. I mean, look at the, the extraordinary.
extraordinary uh, circumstances that I stated. And don't forget what we read before that. But he said, there were many widows in Israel at the time of Elijah. The heavens were shut up for six months, famine in the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, none of the ones in Israel, except that one widow in Zarephath and Sidon. All right? And then he goes on to talk about even Elisha. He said there were a lot of lepers in Israel. But look who got delivered, Naaman, who was the enemy. Now why was that? Because the prophet has, is not accepted uh, in his prophet's hometown. That's something. That where you have seen Christ, where you know Christ, where you are familiar with Christ, it seemingly Christ can't work. But where he goes to the place where we think he will not work, there he works uh, abundantly. Amen. Let me go ahead and read the other one, and then we'll, we'll elaborate on that a little more. Um, in Luke chapter number 11, verse 29 through 32, he said, when the crowds were increasing, he began to say, this generation is an evil generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them. Because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon, and see something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah and see something greater than Jonah was here. So he gave you two more uh, circumstances of that. They had Solomon in their midst, a great thing in their midst. But it took the queen of Sheba to come, the queen of the south, to come for miles and miles to sit back and really appreciate Solomon for who he was. Right. Amen. And then the people of Nineveh were not a people that Jonah even one of the priests to. They were so bad. Yeah. But yet they were the ones that repented. And as much as Jonah got upset that they got saved. Yeah. Amen. So, yeah. so it's telling us that we have this treasure. We have this greatness. We have the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been blessed. But yet, we don't appreciate the very thing that we have. And we daily want to slap him in the face and go against his word. Amen. But yet, we are marveling and we are hearing reports from overseas, reports from people that we may deem, some may deem, not worthy or not at our level or not at our blessed state, not at our intellect, not at, we hear words out of Africa of healing, words out of the Philippines. It seems like some of the most successful pastors have gone through foreign countries and talk about the healings, the deliverances, the miracles, but yet we sit right here in America, we sit right here in a comfort of 72 degree buildings and, and, and carpeted seats and, and, and slabs and carpet and and lights, and, and we can just flip a switch and have whatever we need, and yet we do not give God the glory. All right. Man, so much so nowadays that we even have a generation that uh, needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, my wife mentioned it, and, and it was something I mentioned to her this week that we need to get back to the basics. We have gotten so much and so professional, kind of in line with our Sunday school lesson that uh, we don't even, we've gotten so advanced that we want to prove to each other our knowledge of the Bible. And so we got to have a scripture quotation contest and Sunday school or Bible or Christian education or whatever you want to call it has turned into a, 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 a contest of who is the greatest. And uh, we want to decide who is the smartest, who is the most knowledgeable. And it's gone into the case of where People are not called to preach by God and the Holy Ghost, but they're called to preach by how they feel All that right. they're better than somebody yeah. else. So uh, I feel it. like uh, I am the one. And why am I better? I'm better because I have a better relationship to the pastor. Or I'm better uh, because I have more education. Or I'm better uh, because I look better. I've always been better than them. I've been the quarterback. I've been uh, 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 the valedictorian. I'm smarter. Than they are, so I am called to preach. And 
Uh, we got people from all out of the woodworks doing these things because we have gotten so professional in church that right. we don't understand the core of why the church is here. Man, we 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 major in the minor and minor in the major. We uh, 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 don't bring the blue shoes in here. Amen. No, no, you can't have your hair style like that. Oh, uh, no, your suit can't be Stacey Adams. It's got to be uh, uh, Steve Harvey. Amen. You you got to be this way and the other. And we look at the things that don't really matter. Amen. That even Christ said it's not the things that go into you and what comes out to you. And so uh, we're promoting folks that are liars and hypocrites and yeah. stealers. Amen. That we know outright all because of how much money they give or how loyal they are and all these things. Yeah. Because we think that we can direct them and they can be our puppet. And yet that individual that don't ain't scared to speak up and speak out and tell you no, it's wrong, it ain't right. See, with men believing and becoming great in the kingdom mean, amen, that you had to be, amen, a, a, a puppet, that you had to be right. somebody with no backbone. No, right. Every leader that I've ever seen in the Bible was somebody that didn't stand with the crowd, amen, right. but they stood alone. It didn't matter if they had 400 with them on their side. Amen. How in the world are we, some of the people we're putting in pulpits and putting in leadership, how in the world are we got people that are speaking on behalf of the church? Amen. Can't stand to stand alone. Amen. Or going with the crowd. Well, if that church believes it's all right, then it should be all right over here. No, we got to have them alive. It was like that. The word of God never would have came across on Mount Paul. All right, all if right. Elisha was like that, he never would have stood against him. Gideon was like that. He never would have took the few men that he took. And then if Moses was like that, he never would have went back into Egypt. All if right, Jesus was like that, that, he never would have brought himself. Amen. To the cross. Amen. And so we got to understand that we have to stand. Stand up. Amen. It's been easy for a while now. Amen. We see preachers with all this money and they flashing it and flaunting it. Amen. And we see the Lord, the luster. Amen. And we say, oh man, doctor, lawyer, preacher. Amen. I ain't smart enough to be a doctor. Doctor ain't smart enough to be a lawyer and get all that money. But hey, maybe I can fool enough people to be a preacher. All right. And I can Talk about it. No, the world of the preachers nowadays will just stand up. They don't care if family don't like them. They don't All care right. if friends don't All like right. them. They don't care if they don't talk about the family. They're afraid of going to jail. Amen. They're just going to do all that they can do to declare the word of God. Where are the preachers? Amen. Where are the preachers? Amen. They don't care about us. They don't care about the family. They don't care about the friends. They don't care about the family. 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 They don't the news wire. Amen. Evil folk are commenting, but nobody will say what thus saith the Lord. All Who right. said that they got to listen to you and join your church and be a part of your congregation? That's another thing that we ain't got upset about. Oh, Amen. Yeah. We think that the success of ministry is the amount of people you got in the views. Amen. But they didn't listen to Isaiah. They didn't listen to Jeremiah. Amen. They still went into destruction, but Jeremiah did. Amen. What thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And Jeremiah it was fair, amen, and while the kingdom went under, amen, so we got to understand and let God be true, and every man be a liar, amen, I don't care if it comes down through, amen, your discipline manual, I don't care if it comes down through your doctrine manual, I don't care if it comes down through your denominational manual, amen, if it doesn't align up with the word of God, amen, it ain't the word of God. Amen. 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 We got a generation now that don't know how to speak like God thinks. Amen. That was the purpose of the word of God. Amen. It was for people to think like God thinks. Amen. It was for people to just live perfect. Amen. But have a thought like God thought. Amen. So that when they went against the will of God, in their imperfections, they can get themselves perfect again. Amen. But this generation thinks everything is right as long as it doesn't bother nobody else. That's the lie. Amen. From hell. Hey, hey, what you do affects me. That's why we develop laws. That's why God brought laws. Amen. Why would God tell them how to act in the wilderness if your neighbor, what your neighbor did, didn't affect you? That's right. 
Amen. I tell you what, little move into a neighborhood that cares about property values, and you'll find out how quick they're concerned about what your house looks like compared right. to what theirs looks like. Yes. They want you to keep it at a level. Amen. You start leaving, let your grass grow high enough, or leave cars in your yard and do all these things, and let Roanoke County or Roanoke City find out about it. They'll be coming out there soon enough. Why? Because we know. And why can we be a hypocrite when it comes to our monetary values? Amen. We can be a hypocrite when it comes to how much value our houses and cars and ourselves have, but yet when we have value in terms of what God sees of us as a generation, amen, we don't even care about it. No, we got to care about what God wants out of us. Amen. amen. We got to stop. That's like you telling me, amen, what I need. Amen. You telling me, oh, uh, you, you my husband and wife, and you telling me, amen, I don't need this much. I don't need that much. When I know what I need, amen. Amen. I know, amen, how I feel. I know, amen, what makes me happy and what makes me sad. Amen. If you talking this kind of way to me and making me sad, I ought to be able to tell you, look, I don't like it when you call me that name. I don't like it when, the, yeah, they called me that nickname when I was a kid, but when I was a kid, I was 200 more pounds than them, and I don't like it. It reminds me of that. Amen. They said, well, they've been calling me that all those years. Why it bother you now? It bothered me all those years, and I'm just speaking up. And then the same thing with God. He has the requirements of how to love him, how to obey him. He put it in his word, not to just put it in there for us to gloss over. Amen. But for us to learn and to be able to love God, amen, with the love that he requires. Amen. amen. But yet we live in a generation that wants to tell God how we are going to love him. Amen. Right. We want to tell God which commandments we want to follow, which principles we want to follow, and which ones are cast out. Amen. We live in a generation that wants to tell Tell the folk that read the word of God, understand the word of God, what they should believe out of the word of God. Amen. But the devil is a liar. Yeah. Amen. You got to obey the word by the truth. And it has to be rightly divided. You can't just pick one commandment out of the Old Testament. And because we don't do that today, and then you say the whole thing is null and void. No, right. understanding and wisdom gives us the mindset amen. that we understand that some things were under the law. But there were some things, amen, that God carried on. Amen. There were some things that were generational at that time, but there are some things that Pass throughout generation. Yeah. And then there's a gospel, amen, for everybody. And then there's the everlasting gospel. Amen. God didn't tell him in the old testament to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. But he told him to be circumcised. Amen. But when Jesus came, yeah. amen, it brought about fulfillment. Yeah. God didn't tell you to continue to offer up bulls, goats, and rams today. Why? Because we have a sacrifice. Amen. Because we have a perpetual sacrifice. Amen. That's why we get baptized in Jesus' name. That's why we get filled with the Spirit. Because He is our sacrifice. The blood of bull, goats, and rams couldn't save me like His blood saved me. Amen. The blood of a bull, amen. It may have helped me for a year. Amen. But nevertheless, the Lord Jesus Christ is the everlasting love. He's the everlasting sacrifice. He's the everlasting. Amen. So we can't allow the conversation of this generation to be driven by folk that know nothing about God. They haven't been filled with the Spirit. Amen. Oh, uh, it's an attack. It's an attack. It's an attack upon the leadership structure of the church. Amen. To the point now that's been going on for years. Uh, amen. Where preacher after preacher has fallen and been magnified in the media of their shortcomings. Even though there are thousands of preachers and a handful that are fallen by the wayside. Amen. Ain't it something how high they were risen. Amen. And how hard they fell. Oh, yeah. So much so that now the reaction to people that are preacher is that the chicken eating Cadillac driving, amen, money hoarding people, amen. But nevertheless, yeah. God established the preacher. It was the sign of Jonah that established and saved oh, yeah. them. Amen. We got to bring back the honor to the the, the oh, yeah. of the preacher. Oh, yeah. amen. Anytime you mention in the same breath, amen, as the uh, uh as the lawyer, amen. Anytime you mention in the same breath as the crook and sometimes even the doctor. Amen. But yet the doctor may be crooked and overcharge you. Amen. But when 
he's going to go when you need healing. Amen. You better go on to the doctor. Amen. Because he's going to bring, amen, the knowledge. Yes, yeah, the lawyer may overcharge you. It may be crooked. They may have some things going on. There's some bad doctors and some bad lawyers. Uh, but nevertheless, you need a lawyer. Amen. Same thing with preachers. There's some bad preachers out there. Yeah. But how can they hear without a preacher? Okay. Amen. How, amen, can he preach unless he fit? Amen. It's not just that every preacher out here is doing the right thing. Amen. But God has sent some, uh, and they care about how you live. They care about yeah. your salvation. Yeah. They care about your soul. If you never yeah. give them a dime, if you never pay their salary or give them a car, they still going to preach you the word and tell you the truth. Uh, so help them God. Uh, amen. We got to watch out for this generation. Uh, they don't appreciate, amen, the salvation that has been given unto them. Uh, amen. Yes, we came through slavery, uh, but yet he is a righteous God. Uh, yes, we may have come through Rome, uh, but he is a righteous God. Uh, it wasn't where it started. Now, yes, he may have to come through the backs of imperialism, uh, colonialism, uh, racism, uh, but yet he still got his word across. Uh, and when we are free, he showered down his love upon us. Uh, uh, he didn't say, I just gave it to this group of people, uh, the people of this color, uh, just by Jews only. Uh, it wasn't even about white and black. It was all about Jews. Uh, yeah. But he said, I poured out my spirit upon all flesh. Uh, okay. Amen. Jews, this our bond and free male or female. Amen. I gave it to everybody. Yeah. And he said, save yourself. Yeah. You brought this up to one generation. You ain't got to go through your husband. You ain't got to go through your wife. He said, save yourself. Save yourself. You ain't got to go through the master. You ain't got to go through the slave master. He said, save yourself. Yeah. You might have been whipped in the back, but we can still sing three votes, three chariots. Yeah. They might have taken your meal for the day, but you can still say, we're going to wait in the water. Uh, amen. Yeah, until we got our deliverance. Uh, amen. And now that we deliver, and I, I got to go back to it, uh, but now that we deliver, we want to say God ain't in it. Uh, the church ain't the center of the community no more. Uh, we shifted our focus. Uh, the church brought us through those hard times. Uh, God brought us through those struggling times. Uh, when they uh, hosed us in the streets, uh, we ran to the church. Uh, amen. When they beat us up and shot us and lynched us, uh, we ran into the church. Uh, amen. So much so that they bombed the church. Uh, and even now they shooting up the church. Uh, but that's why the church is our refuge. Uh, the church is our strength. Uh, don't underappreciate the church. Uh, don't underappreciate the gathering of believers. Uh, it ain't about the pastor. It's about one people. Uh, on one accord. Uh, Open themselves together. Uh, pray and seek in the face of God. Uh, turning from the wicked ways. Uh, trying to hear from God. Uh, and when they heard from God, uh, they knew what to do on the outside. Uh, when they heard from God, uh, they knew how to walk and how to talk. Uh, he gave them peace. Uh, the peace that passed all understanding. How can you be so nice when they beat you all day? How, how can you be so nice when they got all these Jim Crow laws? How, how can you be so nice when the enemy is coming in like a flood? How, but you know, I know that the Lord will slip up and stand up. How, he will fight on my behalf. How, after I suffer, after a little while, how, I know that the Lord will bring my righteousness to pass. How, I know that if I hang on to the little while longer, how, it's going to be my season to be blessed. How, anybody I have the upper, upper hand right now, huh? but I know that God is on my side. I, I'm going to have to go through the struggle. I, I'm going to have to go through the pain, huh? but I still believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Huh? There's no safety in the government. Huh? Amen. It seems like we shifted huh? the focus of our help huh? from the church huh? to R&B and hip-hop artists, huh? from the church huh? to movie songs, huh? from the church huh? to the government. Huh? We'll go to the church for help. Huh? We'll give the government our, all our, our, our freedoms. Huh? We'll go to the church to help keep our lights on. Huh? But yet, we want to go to the government. Huh? And the government will run you through all types of bureaucracy and red tape. Huh? But the church has been there all along. Huh? Speaking up for the devil trying. Huh? The church has been there all along. Huh? Amen. Healing the sick. Huh? The church has been there all along. Huh? Amen. Comforting the broken hearted. The church has been there all along. Huh? 
bringing marriages together, huh? helping people find jobs, huh? keeping people and families afloat, huh? bringing people salvation, huh? helping the drug addict, huh? helping the drug, helping the homosexual, huh? bringing them into the right mind, huh? and bringing them into the right fellowship with God. Huh? And now they're 50, 60, 70 years old, huh? saying that God has been my helper. Huh? I'm not what I used to be. Huh? Thank God for what he made out of me. Yeah. Why? Because God did it through the church. Huh? Yeah. Don't hate on the church. Huh? You got to run to the church. Huh? They want you out of the way from the church. Huh? But you got to run to it. Huh? That's why they attack it. Huh? That's why they attack pastors. Huh? That's why they attack the choir director. Huh? That's why he attacked the choir members. Huh? That's why he checked the young ladies that could be mothers. Huh? Let them get messed up before they even get a shot to be a mother. Huh? Let them be a mother too soon. Huh? That's why he messed with the young men huh? so that they can't grow up and be respectable men. Huh? He's listening to the word of God on how to be a man. Huh? It's an attack coming from all sides. Huh? And we're arguing about who should be up and who should be down. Huh? We're arguing about who should be on the front seat or even up here. Huh? Instead of worrying about the folk that are out there. Huh? Right. And not even the folk that are out there. Huh? But the folk that are out there. Oh, yeah. huh? We got to get back to basics. We got to preach Jesus and him crucified. If God uses you, I think we got to be like Peter. Peter yeah. didn't have any preconceptions. Uh, right. The Lord came to him and said, All of these on this blanket, uh, they're clean, and what I call clean don't call common. Uh, amen. And Peter uh, went into the house of Cornelius. Uh, amen. He had his own mindset uh, at this time and even after this time uh, about who should be saved. Uh, the Jews are the people of God, uh, they should be saved. Uh, but when he got to the house of Cornelius, uh, God told him to go there, uh, so he went. Uh, and that's something he went on a mission huh? that he didn't even believe was supposed to take place. Huh? He was just like Jonah going to Nineveh. Nineveh huh? They should be saved, huh? but he went there. Huh? And what happened? Huh? The Spirit of God huh? rested upon the Canadians in household. Huh? He didn't say, well, this ain't my huh? He said, but I see the presence of God. Huh? Amen. Who can forget for big waters just like we have got? Huh? Right. They did the same thing that we did. Huh? I didn't teach them how to do it. I didn't show them how to do it, huh? but it was the power of God huh? yeah. when we as people of God huh? could be more keen to the power of God huh? instead of all our rights, rules, and orders. Huh? If God blesses, let it bless. Huh? If God instructs, let it instruct. Huh? If he blesses a 10-year-old, let him bless a 10-year-old. Huh? Right. Speak 10-year-old. Huh? Whoever it is, let him bless it. Huh? And let it cry out unto God. Huh? We need all the help we can get. Huh? Sit back arguing about all these different things. Huh? When the enemy just walking by us, all good, huh? Amen. And do what you say. That's the thing about it, huh? It's not like on a go kart track, huh? Amen. I'm right behind two cars, huh? They battle, boom, and they battle, boom. I'm sitting back here, me and my little niece, huh? And we ride in Tennessee, huh? Amen. We ride up there, uh huh? They argue, they fight, they bump up, trying to race each other. And next thing you know, I saw my opening, huh? They bumped each other and left the inside clear. I just sit on sideways and kept on going, huh? That's the same thing in the church, huh? We bump it. And fight and doing all these things between the church and the organization. And the devil just said, I'm just waiting for my over. I'm just going to wave and keep on going. Yeah. And we still got that. Yeah. I think it's a win. I ain't got to worry about who's up and who's down. Y'all can act stupid if you want to. I'm talking to everybody. Amen. Worried about who y'all going up there and preach all you want to preach. Amen. But I got a gospel. I got a gospel that I got to share. Amen. I got something. Anytime I want to sit down, I get a
people that want to make a mockery in the church, uh, with all the politics, uh, with all the real news, uh, with all the stuff that go on. Uh, but you still say, look, I got a word to preach. Uh, I ain't worried about all of that. But I'm standing up straight. Uh, I wear what you want me to wear. Uh, I do what you want me to do. Uh, but I'm a preacher word. Uh, well, I'll be brown as they brown as they have. If it ain't right, Lord, help me say it ain't right. Uh, if we need to stop it, let me say it. stop it. Uh, time to sit. Sitting quiet, huh? Amen. While everything is going on, huh? Time to sit quiet, huh? While sinners are preaching the gospel, huh? Amen. It's screwing it up for everybody, huh? Time to sit quiet, huh? Amen. While folks don't care no more, huh? About those being saved, huh? Amen. But yet they want to sit up here, huh? And put on all their balls, huh? They say, I'm intimidated, huh? They want to put on their big hats, huh? I'm a part of one of these, huh? Ain't nobody care about what you got on. It's what you got in. Uh, we will got it right now. Uh, so let's stand together. Uh, let's stand together. Because uh, the enemy is coming. Uh, the blood moves that came. Uh, the signs and the stars have already shown. Uh, the earth is sick. Uh, there's nothing new today uh, that i got to get out of here. Uh, but there's nothing new today uh, that it hasn't been before. Uh, when the Israelites uh, went into uh, the promised land. Uh, the Lord told us, huh, the land is sick. Huh, the enemy, huh, yeah. the enemy has done so much sin. Huh, yeah. The enemy has done so much sin huh, yeah. that he literally said huh, that the land is sick. Huh, yeah. But yet we won't recognize the name. Huh, amen. Floods. Amen. Yeah. Huh, animals die. Huh, fish washing up on shore. Huh, shark attacks in North Carolina. Huh, the land is sick. Huh, yeah. Because all of the sins of the people. Yeah. Huh, and God is about to give up promised land, huh? Up to those that are faithful and all right here, huh? They may be so different than it was before, huh? And then if you're not in the church, get in here, huh? Amen, before it's ever happened to you. Just as it was in the days of Noah, huh? First chapter 17, in the end, huh? In the days of Noah, it said they were married, huh? They were going about their business, huh? Amen, but Noah was steadily building the ark, huh? Amen, doing what God said, huh? For those hundred years, I have uh, building on the ark, uh, and they do what God said do. Uh, telling the people you gotta come in the ark uh, before it's too late. Uh, then all of a sudden, uh, they woke up and water hit the face. Uh, they said, "Did you spit on me?" Uh, no, nah, they said, "Water hit my face." Uh, did you throw water at me? Uh, and all of a sudden, the downpour came. Uh, amen. And the water began to rise, uh, and Noah was safe uh, because he obeyed the word of God. It's the same thing. Hallelujah, 
of teaching people the word of God and teaching people about Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we have a generation that knows no church that don't know God. Been around church was dragged to church as children. And really we got a generation that don't know that they won't be dragged to church. That's right. We were even a result of a generation that was born to babies. And because babies had babies, yeah. they didn't teach. They didn't teach properly. They were more concerned right. about still staying cool yeah. than they were about bringing up people All that right. shared that religion All with right. God. The first responsibility of a child is to bring them up in a God fearing way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Giving them the best. But we wanted to, we got a generation of people that want to look like their children, dress yeah. like their children, shop in their children's stores, yeah. and things of that nature. And so, yeah. as a result, instead of being parents to them and teaching them the right and wrongs and feeding their conscience with knowledge, so that even if they don't have the Holy Ghost, they have good moral moral uh, range to deal with. But we didn't give them that. And so, who did we let talk to? We let the music videos, the bar yeah. and people that didn't know God talk to them. People that hate God. People that even mock God with their name, you know. And we allow them to teach our kids. And those yeah. kids are now making decisions. They are voting. They are doing these things. And our country is starting to do things. And then just to be like the devil, where you got one political party that is so extreme that you can't relate to them. And the other political is this way. And then the other political party is so extreme that you can't relate to them. And what is your choice? One or the other. Jesus. And so you pick this one because you may relate to you on a, on a on a societal basis, but yet they're pushing an agenda that you don't agree with. But yet you look over here and they will block the agenda you don't agree with, but they don't like you as a people because of the color of your skin or where you come from. They think you ought yeah. to be where they are just by hard work and no luck and no, you know. So that's how it is. The Lord's given to us, but we have to get back to believing in God. Yeah. It's a shame that we can't have a Christian uh, political party. Amen. But we can't agree Amen. because it ends up looking just like Congress. Yes, it does. We end up doing more harm than good. Yeah. Amen. I love to do it. I ask him about it. I love to do it, but we can't do it. Amen. We're going to let you go. Amen. We got service this afternoon. Amen. But we're going to get back to it.